Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. Can one work in a situation where the source of the money may be impermissible? There's some nuance to this question. This, this happens particularly in certain countries right, where large charities or a lot of government funding for particular types of um, charities is through lotteries and the like. So the, the fiqh related to it is that you cannot work in a line of work that is in itself impermissible. So you cannot do things that are haram. For someone whose primary activity is something that is directly impermissible. Those are the the two things that, in terms of the permissibility of your employment, that you cannot do the haram for someone whose primary activity would be considered haram. So you cannot you know, so if you're working, you have to see what's their, their line of work, and if it's. But if a company has a range of activities, some of them impermissible. So you work for a publishing company. Is publishing permissible? In general, yes. So you can work in in publishing even if some of what they publish is impermissible. But you cannot be working in their pornography department or whatever, as is obvious, right? Because you cannot be working in the haram for someone whose da- who's the work itself, that th- their line of activity is directly impermissible, right? So could have, but then of course many c- complicated issues come. Can you work for the maker of firearms? And fiqh-wise you can, because do firearms have a legitimate use? In war, they do. In self-defense, they do. So whatever, you know, within the parameters of law and and fairness. Now, you're not responsible if some people, many, use them in impermissible ways. But there's an element of dislikedness that when you have discretion, you avoid things that, that are associated with the impermissible to the extent you can. But we don't always have the luxury of choice in that. A third governing criterion with respect to employment is that we... We, we do not hold non-Muslims responsible for the rulings of the Sharia. It's simple as that. Right? We do not hold non-Muslims responsible for the rulings of the Sharia. Now we cannot do the wrong and we cannot be directly party to what we hold to be wrong. But if you're in a non-Muslim country and you know, let's say the, there's, a, there's a foundation or an endowment or some source of funding that, that the, the source of funding is fully from lottery or some other mode of gambling or whatever. Can you accept that funding in itself? Yes. Because we do not hold non-Muslims responsible for the rulings of the Sharia. Just as if your next door neighbor owns a company called you know, Only Beer. They sell beer and only beer, called Bob. Beer and only beer. So they don't sell anything but beer. Not even chewing gum. Like nothing. Beer and only beer. And they invite you for food. Can you transact with someone? Because we do not hold on Muslims responsible for the rulings of share. But if your friend Bob, your neighbor Bob becomes Muslim, then the standard changes, because now we do hold them responsible, so the standard would change. In those cases, there's fiqh related to it, but broadly, this is a guiding principle. So we cannot be engaged in the haram, but we don't hold them responsible for those things. So if you have, um, so in those cases, if there's funding from those kinds of sources, it is permissible to take, but if someone were to choose to avoid it, they would, they, you know, 
that's a consideration of caution right um, but some scholars suggest one could take it for secondary purposes right like don't build a masjid using lottery money from the government for example right there's, there's sacredness to it but if you have if you have projects to feed the homeless etc use it in things that, that are you know, social purposes rather than you know, religious purposes and and those things is best to to consult about um, Allah. so that's with respect to, to the lottery and the same principles apply to you know Walmart work working for a company that sells some impermissible things that if the work you're doing is permissible and the line of work of the company you're working in is permissible it is permissible to work in that we have a whole slew of answers on Seekers Hub about the principle of assisting in sin especially the Hanafi school is quite expansive when it comes to the issue of assisting in sin and it distinguishes between what is direct involvement and, and indirect involvement that at the level of moral obligation you're not morally culpable for things where your the relationship between you and the sin committed is indirect but where you can avoid it it's superior so let's say if you if you own a, a shopping mall do all the shops in your shopping mall have to be sharia compliant no they have to comply with the law right? so if you're let's say in a muslim country and you know, there's because some things are public responsibility right so upholding the sharia publicly is a public responsibility that's not, it's not your direct responsibility we're not god's policeman on earth okay so what the, the laws are what can you know in that sense that is the public responsibility so if we're operating in a muslim society we'd have to keep in mind what what the public law is and be within that and in a muslim society we'd have more personal responsibility because we hold that that Muslim person is morally responsible so we deal with them accordingly but but even in a Muslim society and the fuqaha use this example in, in Hanafi fiqh let's say if you if you if you have a, a a storefront let's say and you're going to rent it out to someone who's going to use it as a temple for idol worship are you allowed to rent that place out let me ask you guys a question. Are you allowed to rent it out? So the Hindu World Association, or they call it WA, World Association of Hindus, right? WA, right? Comes to you and said, we want to, we want to re lease this unit to, make, to, you know, to use as a temple. Can you rent it out? Can you? In, in the Hanafi school, you can. Because what are you doing? You're renting out a space. That's what, what you're doing. Is, is your usage permissible? Is you, the act of you renting out a space permissible? Yes. Could they use it in a permissible way? Yes. Are you directly assisting them in that which is wrong? No, you're not. That's by their choice. Now, there's a public regulation of it in a Muslim society. You know the, the local authorities, etc., zoning, etc. Just as, and sometimes people wonder how can how come non-Muslims can't do certain things in Muslim countries? And the answer is very simple. Have ever heard about zoning laws? Like we just moved to new house, can could we could we rent the place we rented on wherever we rented it? Could we turn it into Seekers Hub 3.0? No, because the area is not zoned like that. So in traditional Muslim society, that's zoning. In Muslim areas, there's certain things that you can't do. In Christian areas, you can do whatever you feel like. Right? Common sense. So, that's not considered assisting in sin. But where you can avoid it, right? you have two offers. One, someone wants to op open a coffee shop, and someone wants to open you know, something that we would hold to be wrong. Then when you have a choice, you choose what's better but that's it's an important principle to be clear about if you go to seekers hub you'll see a number of answers on the principle of um, assisting in sin um, for uh, for more detail on that but of course that does not preclude caution where 
it is within your discretion to exercise caution. So, some, sometimes life is complicated right, that if you have two options right, the coffee shop um, versus a beer store right. Um, and of course, even in Canada, we have a lot of zoning requirements. You can't just open a beer store anywhere, right? So compliant, you know. And you know, Islam is not some foreign fan fantastical entity. Many of these reg public regulations are for the same reason, for regulation of public interest. You can't just open it. Like even if you're Christian, there's, you can open in a Christian area because that's where presumably the, the alcohol drinkers would be, right? Um, travelers used to say, if you go to the Muslim world, look for the church steeples that's where you'll find the liquor stores um, and it's um, certainly true in Damascus. I only know because I used to walk through the Christian area, see the, see the church, see the liquor store, um, but yeah, sometimes personal considerations come in, right, that you're not breaking even, you purchased a mall, you're not breaking even, you know, that's the biggest unit you know, sometimes in life they can be a mix of considerations. And they can be a mix of considerations. Sometimes it is haram for you to do what's more cautious. Let's say you are managing, you're a property manager for, for a third party. Can you there choose to do what's more cautious by your religious standards? Even if they're a Muslim. You have to act in accordance with the expressed best interest of the per party that has entrusted you. So you're not allowed to be cautious. Right? If you work as a taxi driver, right, for let's say an airport, you know, for one of these airport taxi services, you're not working independently. Can you choose to avoid taking certain types of customers? No, because you are harming your employer. Now, if it's your own, you, you know, because there, your employment is a trust. You're working for someone else, and you have a limit of what your trust is. Okay, so this is what where knowing the principles related to what is assistance in sin and what is not are very important, because you can be cautious with your own choices. But you cannot be cautious when it comes to someone else's advantage. That you disadvantage them out of your own caution. Right? Um, and this comes up a number of times in different countries where Muslim taxi drivers refuse to pick up customers from the airport because they're, they're, they're carrying alcohol from the duty-free shop. It would be haram to refuse that because contractually you have to. And it's not prohibited in your religion because you're taking someone from point A to point B. What they have on them is not your, you're not responsible for that. It's a very interesting issue, the issue of assisting in sin because there's so much fiqh related to it. Can, can someone work here in Canada as pizza delivery for pizza pizza? What's the most common type of pizza that is sold? No, no prizes for guessing. Pepperoni pizza. Right, pepperoni is haram, but can you work in delivering pizzas? What, what are you doing? You're taking a box from place A to place B. You're not responsible for that. Can you sell pepperoni pizza? That's a separate thing. No, you can't when you have choice. Right? That's a separate matter. Right? But the delivery, now if you have a choice, go. To, you, you try to choose something else, but we don't live in an ideal world. Because you also have a responsibility for providing for family and paying your debts and expenses and many, many things. So that's where you know, there, there's a balance of considerations. Um, but even in the other last point to make, uh, the, the, the last point to make is that sometimes when we get in a hard situation, there can be exceptions. Sometimes there are exceptions. Because that's the balance of the Sharia. Um, I was asked, and I asked this question of some senior scholars, because there's a difference between a general ruling and a specific application. That, let's say, there's a difference between 
someone opening a you know a pizza store and saying, "Well, I'm going to sell pepperoni pizzas that you know, pork, like regular you know, pepperoni from pork." You can't do that. But what if you took over? Let's say someone lost their their you know their 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 father died, and the, the whole family's wealth is invested in a particular franchise, and they 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 do not give you an exemption to sell. non pork pepperoni what do you do you have to just get rid of the store immediately in those exceptional cases those require specialists don't give yourself a fatwa either that no i have to get rid of it or no i can keep it because those are sensitive cases and those are sensitive cases and they require caution and sometimes our religion the, the way of the prophet balances two amazing qualities principle and pragmatism but not expedient pragmatism that leaves principle, but also not principle that is rigid and unconcerned about well-being. Right? There's a balance that the Sharia has come with. And those sensitive cases, they require, you know, one, sh one should go you know, to experts to, to deal with those kinds of cases. Because there, um, and many of these issues come up. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit SeekersGuidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit SeekersGuidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.